Hey guys, welcome back. I have some background music for this video because I decided it would probably be a better idea to put some background music on my videos, since they're basically just me droning on for 11 minutes with nothing else on. So, um, as the first order of this is be to tell you that the background music is from the Jack and Daxter Precursor Legacy soundtrack. As that bit ends and it goes into the next. Yeah. Um, what is this from? Now I'm curious. Is this from the swamp level? This sounds like it's from the... No, this sounds like... It sounds like... You know that, uh, the second area? With that, uh, crazy guy slinging rocks everywhere? I think this is what it's from. Anyways, I probably should get to the main point of the video today. Which is that I made a new Trojan. Yeah, it's from that area for sure. The, fo the uh, Trojan is called Fontdel. And it does pretty much what it says on the tin, in that it deletes the fonts, or re it rather, it deletes the registry keys that point to the fonts on the Windows XP operating system. So, before I run it, I'll show you these keys. The three keys it targets are, damn it, font mapper, font, and font substitutes. It takes these keys out completely, and there's nothing left there which causes some problems when you're trying to use fonts. So let's run it. So on a proper run, what it does is it props up for like half a second, which is what it should do. However, it took longer because this computer is pretty slow for whatever reason. And then it brings up this error. It tells you it failed to run properly. Press any key to continue. All right. So you're finished with your work for the day and you decide, all right, it's time to log off. So let's reset the machine like we came back. <clears throat> Boot into Windows. Eh, we'll skip the disk check for now. Oh my god. And you're left with this. How are you supposed to use this? Oh my dear lord. This operating system is borderline unusable. Now there's some things that stay intact, for example the run window works, but if you try and go into regedit, <laughs> good luck. If I could show you regedit, you'd be able to see that three different folders in the font directory are missing. This is from the start, you could probably navigate HK Vocal Machine software. No, I hit the wrong tab. Did it delete the whole software tab? Anyways. <laughs> oh, yeah, it's HK Vocal Machine, I really don't know. I'm not going to pretend like I do know what these are. <clears throat> you bring up a command prompt, you can see most of your stuff still works. Oh, wrong mistake there. But, um, the, the operating system has seen better days. Now, being the responsible person that I am, I decided if I'm going to make a dangerous Trojan that could screw up operating systems, I'd probably should make a tool to fix it. Because, if you were hit with this Trojan and you didn't have a tool to fix it, you would be screwed. Now normally you might be able to say, let's go into the registry and just, uh, oh, you're never going to be able to find where those keys were. And then replacing them one by one, knowing what keys are missing and what keys aren't, never going to happen. I made a program that does just that though. Now I have to figure out which one of these it is, and I have to know, I think this is edit? Yeah. This is the program. I can show you this because this isn't dangerous. It just fixes the problem. What it does is it just adds all of these files back to the registry. All these keys, rather. Um, running it's pretty simple. It says it fixes it. Now, one of the interesting problems I had was when I tried to run it the first time, I actually had some garbage characters in front for whatever reason. Probably a consequence of deleting the fonts. But anyways, I'm just going to run it and let it do its work. So this is it adding all those different registry keys. It'll take, a little, take about 10 seconds, I think. And it's done. It says a restart is necessary to apply changes. That's okay. Let's listen to the uh, let's listen to the program and restart. Uh, let's get that disk check again. As you can see, the operating system is somewhat back to normal. Now there's certain quirks about it that I haven't been able to figure out, but overall, it at least is in a usable state. Um, this is down and technically I navigate to this, it is, um, HQ Local Machines, Software, Microsoft, Windows NT, current version, and it's in this area. 
So um, this is Font Mapper. These values are all manually added. They could be wrong, but these are what I did myself. All these values are manually added. As you can see, I made a mistake and Mangle is not added properly. This is actually an initial mistake I made anyways because I directed myself to the Windows directory and not to the font directory inside the Windows directory. So that wouldn't have worked anyways. That's a problem I had with my first run and I just did a find and replace. But as you can see, since this is C semicolon Windows instead of C colon Windows, it did not get found by the find and replace. That's an easy fix, however. I can show you it in just a second. Reg add, um... This is the way you do it with a command line. You can change it much more simply from regedit. If you want to change it from regedit, you just go to modify and you change this to mangle.ttf and you exit out. See, there are no other noticeable problems. The syntax of the code was a major pain to write. Here's the actual code. It's a mess of quotes and slash d and slash v and it was not fun to write, to say the least. Someone sent me a league message. Uh, I can know you want to see it. Sorry, PBR. I can't do that. So there we go. That's that's everything that has to go with this program. That's the actual program along with the fix for it. The fix has its quirks. I'm not sure why. For example, I'll show you one of the big ones. I'll do it with this. Let's go into here. Let's say I want to save. That's the wrong save. That's what you want to save as. This font is, just doesn't look like the right font to me. Maybe I'm just weird, but it just doesn't look like the right font. But anyways, that's that's all I have to show you for the video today. Um, obviously, as per usual, I don't plan on releasing either of these into the wild. People could replicate it relatively easily if they know what they're doing, but the fix is also relatively simple. I don't want to show you the actual code for the dangerous program for obvious reasons, because people can just take it, type it into a command prompt, and then, or type into a uh, notepad file, save it as a batch file, and have a dangerous file on their hands. So I don't want to be responsible for that. But anyways, I hope you enjoyed the video. I'll see ya.